God, we thank you for today. We thank you that um, we can still enjoy the things that we enjoy. And God, we thank you, Lord God, that no matter what happens in our life, you are still on the throne. Nothing surprises you. Nothing blindsides you. Nothing takes you by surprise. So God, we just thank you uh, for all your love and your mercy and grace in our lives. We thank you that you loved us first and that we get the pleasure of loving you back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I said at the start of today, we are doing this kind of November-ish is a, I like to do series is, and it really bugs me when they don't end in the month. And so uh, kind of just led by God on that as we did four, we have four messages that I just wrote down. And then I said, I'm just going to pick and choose them as they come. And so we talked about breaking the limits on the first Saturday or first Sunday in November and how there's limits in our lives and we just need to break through it. And then last week we talked about, uh, does anybody remember? Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, we talked about trusting God. And that wasn't a specific message for post-election uh, apocalypse. Okay, and it wasn't just specifically for that. That was basically just saying, hey, in our lives, we should trust God in everything. In everything we do, trust in Him. That, and we said the statement that no matter who sits in the White House, it doesn't determine what goes on in your house. And God's still on the throne. It's not like, you know, everything's going on. I remember years ago, and our younger crowd back there might not, but I remember watching the Today Show every morning after the Al Gore and George Bush uh, election, you know, and all that stuff. And I was like, man, we need to do it again? No. And so, you know, that wasn't, that was just a specific message. It wasn't time because of that, but it just shows that we should trust in God. And today the message is, I believe, simply that, I believe. And um, this message, uh, I've, I've, uh, had it for a couple years, and, and we've actually got some shirts that it's church made. It says, I believe and do you. And it was kind of a great icebreaker. Someone would come up and go, what do you believe? And if you're like me, you would come up with some weird alien space, flat earth type thing to just start throwing at them. And go, no, I'm just messing with you. Uh, I believe in God, do you? And so we, we, we have to understand that when we believe something, and we'll get to it here real quick, that a lot of it's on us. A lot of it is on us. You can believe in gravity, or you cannot believe in gravity. But if you've climbed a tree and you've slipped, gravity believes in you. <laughs> right? You are now a believer. Okay? And then I saw her famous and now a believer. What was that song? Is that Trek? Who sang that? Or the Beatles or something? I don't know. Anyway, all I know is now in my head, I got Trek and Donkey singing that song. But it, it, it's up to us. And we're going to have fun today talking about that. But in the Bible, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I can't talk about belief without talking about faith. And since we live our lives by faith, not by sight, we have to kind of lay some groundwork. And so when we talk about trusting in God, it really just flows into today. And so last week, remember, dictionary.com defines trust as reliance on the integrity, strength, and ability, or security in a person or a thing, or, or just flat out confidence. I have confidence in certain areas of my life. I have confidence that I can do things and, and be efficient at it. But there's some things I don't have the greatest confidence in it until I try it. And we talked about that ladder, which I could have brought it out, but it's a rickety old thing. And if you looked at it, you would think, there's no way on this earth I'm going to get up on that ladder. And I actually had it against this wall or up against that wall where you're hanging the screen up there. And you're looking at it going, not in a million years. $100 bill? Nope, not going to get on that ladder. But once I said, you know what? I got no other choice. I got up on it I, and it was fine. Now I have confidence in that ladder. Okay? And so uh, I might be the only one, but hey, that's, that's, how, that's how it works. That's how I got confidence is I, I just said, you know what? I'm going to take a couple steps of faith. And so we, in our lives, when we trust God, it comes into trusting what he says. And as we get into this, um, we need to make sure that we are relying on the integrity, the strength, and the ability of God. Okay? We need to rely on that. We need to have confidence in God. You may say to yourself, self, I don't have any confidence in God. Or you may say, yeah, I've got, I've got confidence in in some things, but not the other. I've got confidence in a lot of things. We have to understand that when God speaks, it's the truth. When God talks, when he says something, when, when, when we read it in the Bible and we, we say it out loud, and when God speaks to our hearts, it is the truth. 
okay? And so we have to have faith or confidence in that person and in what they say. But we also have confidence in the thing. Y'all have got faith in chairs right now, right? You know, I've, I've always thought about the illustration of, you know, having a bunch of chairs that have a one with no bolts in it and having people come up and sit down and, and fall through and say, you don't have any faith. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards to those who earnestly seek him. We have to understand that God, God exists, and that's how we have faith in God. We can't see him, but we know he exists. Just like that wind, you can't see the wind, but you see the effects of the wind. Our little windmill we got, it spins in different directions. That thing was just going left and right. I'm like, man, we put wings on that and took it off the pedestal. I want that thing to fly. We don't see it, but we see the effects of it. We don't see God, but we see his words in the Bible. We see his effects in our lives. So slide uh, up there is Mark chapter 9. And if you're in your Bibles, uh, if you got your Bibles, hold up to Mark chapter 9. We, we usually put them up on the screen. Starting out in verse 17, uh, this is Jesus, and he's hanging out with some people. He's in a crowd. And one of the men in a crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, or he's talking to Jesus, I brought my son for you to heal him. He can't speak because he's possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground and makes him foam at the mouth, grind his teeth, and become rigid. Okay, obviously this, this young man has, has a situation in his life. So they brought the boy, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion and fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. I don't want us focusing on this going on right here because this is pretty crazy and none of us have, have seen uh, much of this before. Jesus didn't go, oh my gosh, what's going on with this kid? What's going on? He just goes, probably in a cool, calm, collected voice, how long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. The father replied, since he was very small, the evil spirit often makes him fall into the fire or the water, trying to kill him. That's, that's crazy. The dad goes, have mercy on us. Do something if you can. This is it right here. He asks, the, the father asks Jesus, do something if you can. So we've read that, that you know, this boy had a, was demon possessed. He is, you know, the, the, the foaming at the mouth and all this kind of stuff. However, if we transpose that to you at the doctor going, uh, uh, we don't know what to do. Do something if you can. You know, uh, this past week, Miles uh, had a second round of allergy testing, and um, they probed his back with like 48 or 50 different things. And um, I got I got there after work as fast as I could. And I saw his back, and in my head, I'm going, "We got to do something about this," because I mean, there was literal welts from different things. Now we're gonna we're gonna trust God who takes care of everything but the cat allergy, because that's just our excuse. Not ever cat. But anyway, so imagine yourself, you know, we're, we're putting in something here. I don't know what to do. And he goes to Jesus, do something if you can. And we'll pick it up here. And, and, and Jesus goes, what do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. And then he says this statement. He goes, anything is possible if a person believes. So Jesus says this. He goes, what do you mean if I can? He tells us that anything's possible for them to believe. And the dad goes, can't believe. I'm out. He taps out and walks away. No, what did, what did the dad say? I don't know how much time between what Jesus said and what the father replied. I don't know if the father sat there for a couple minutes, scratched his manly beard. He might have put his hand in his pockets and walked around for a second. Or he could have immediately just respond to this. We don't, we don't know the time frame. Okay, but Jesus said anything's possible. A person believes. I'm sorry, I do know it because it says it right here. The father instantly replied, "I do believe." I don't know if I would have instantly replied. I would have probably would have thought about it for a second. He says, "I do believe, but help me not to doubt." So this tells me that you can believe, you can have faith in your heart, and you can have doubt in your mind. Because a lot of times. Like myself, my brain, I want to know how things work. I want to know how things go. How is this going to happen? What's going to go on? Where's the scheduling? How is this going to do? My wife, she's like, let's just turn right at this stop sign and just keep driving. 
And I'm like, I don't know where that takes me. So we're going to drive by faith and put Google Maps away, and we're just going to have fun. I told you the story about that last week, that I don't like driving without a map. And so that's a step of faith. But if you don't know that story, listen to last week's message. The main point today that I want you guys to walk out of here understanding is this. You can believe if you chose to. You can believe if you chose to. And so we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But this man who brought his son was not born again. He did not go to church. Matter of fact, this could be the first time he met Jesus. He may not have read his Bible. He didn't quote a scripture. He just chose to believe those words from Jesus at that time. And it's possible for those who believe. I believe it. And so he says that, he said that, he goes, there wasn't a priest that he went to, he just went to Jesus. He had no word and probably no Christian background, and so we would think that he doesn't have faith to believe anything, but he chose to believe. He chose the words of Jesus, and he chose to put his faith in what God said. He had enough faith to believe, but he still had to work in his brain because what's going on is he hears what Jesus says, and he goes, all right, I believe that, but his brain is replaying what happens to his son just right then. His brain is replaying what's going on with his son. They're having a bonfire one day, and all of a sudden, like he said, that, you know, I'm saying, I'm telling the story, like putting it in there, but remember he said, hey, sometimes this happens, and this, this thing takes over my son and wants to throw him in the fire. They get, you know, I can't have a bonfire with my kids because I'm afraid of what's going to happen. I can't take him swimming. I, you know, I can't have a swimming pool because of this. And so uh, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of trying to put it in where, where we can visualize it. So he says, I, I'm trying to, I believe in here, but I'm, I'm replaying what's going on up here. Help me to work that out. And Brother Hagen, who, who is uh, known a lot for teaching the faith message, he goes, faith will work in your heart with thoughts of doubt in your mind. So we, we, we just have to work through those thoughts of doubt. We have to work through that. We have to push through the barrier. We have to break that limit. Now, faith is confidence in a person now, if I came and told you that I walked from home to church today, but I came from, uh, I, I went over to Hannibal first, and I didn't use the bridge, I just decided to walk across the water. Right? That's your choice. You can now believe me or not. Right? No. I could have. That's your choice. Has somebody walked on water before? Yeah. yeah. I've walked on solid water before. Jesus and Peter walked on water, so can it be done? Yeah. So that's your choice to believe what I said or not. Now I'm not a liar. I'm not. I'm not a person who lies to you. So, but the question is: Is can you believe that? Can you believe it? I didn't. I didn't walk across the Mississippi River. But when someone says something, you have the choice to believe them or not. I'm, I'm just a human. I like to joke around. You're probably like, oh, God, you're joking. That's funny. Ha, ha, ha. But if Jesus said something, we know it's truth. We know that if he walked on the water, it was truth. And, and, and we'll get to something. You have to decide if you're going to believe it or not. You may say, I can't believe it, but we know that Jesus and Peter did. They walked on the water. So you're saying you choose not to believe me if I told you I walked across the water in the city river today. You're saying I choose not to believe even though it could be true. So when Jesus says something, when God says something, we have to choose to believe it or not. And that's up to us. Remember, our main point is you can believe if you chose to. If you chose to believe, you could. Understand the Bible is the same way. You read it, you hear it, and you choose to whether you believe it or not. This story that we just read, you can say, that never happened. That's the Bible. It's the spoken word of God. It is true. It is 100% true. The devil has worked overtime to convince us that they can't believe. He's tried to put things in our lives. He's tried to put temptations in our brain. He's tried to put thoughts of, of fear in our hearts and in our minds to make us think that we can't believe. Or, that only happens to other people. That only happens to other people. 
How much scripture did this guy know? How many hours did he spend praying in his lifetime? We don't know. Chances are, it's less than five. I mean, seriously, it could be zero. He chose to believe what Jesus said. Our main point, you can believe if you chose to. This guy chose to believe what Jesus said. As we go on, Jesus said to him that all things were possible to him who believed. The man instantly replied, I believe it. That's it right there. I believe it. And then you move and you take the steps in your life that line up with that belief. I believe it, but I don't think it'll happen. Well, then it's not going to happen because you don't really believe it. You're going to have to believe it. The Lord speaks to you and says something crazy like you can get out of debt. And you just sit there and go, well, that'd be nice. But the Lord says to you and says, hey, you can, you can ask for this promotion or you can put in for this promotion and you can get it. Um, that, that can happen to them. If God speaks to your heart and says, hey, you should really try and, 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 do, and, and, and talk to this person. They're, they're ready to, to, to uh, hey, listen, they're, they're ready to accept Christ. They're ready to, to give more of to God. Talk to, talk to this family member. Just do something. You're like, well, I don't really think it's God. When God says something, he speaks, you can do it. Because if you believe in what God said, you say, I believe. All right, all right, God, I believe it. You can do it. This is in my notes where I say I didn't walk across the Mississippi River, so I got ahead of myself. So everything God said he would do in the Bible, we either say, I believe it, or not to. We choose to believe, or we choose not to believe. Ah, I don't know about that. Seems kind of crazy. There's all these people doing something and God healed that guy. I don't know. Or, or God provided for them. Or, or they took a step in faith. I don't know. We can take what God says as truth. If the Bible is, is a God, there's a promise of God in there, and, and you're dealing with something that contradicts that, like, like if the Bible says that you can you can uh, be blessed and be a blessing, or you can be at the head, not the tail. I mean, who wants to be the tail, right? Unless you're barbecuing like a like a part of a pig or something, then you don't want the tail. But the head's always prettier than the tail. The head's always better than the tail. You know, I mean, that's what the Bible says: you'll be the head and not the tail. I don't want to be that. But if I'm never moving forward, I always feel like I'm I'm lagging behind, or nothing's ever working right, or sometimes my life stinks. Well, then that was a good one. Is the tail part of that? There you go. Preacher. I can believe that or not. Our second slide, Hebrews chapter 6. There's three scriptures up there. Listen to this. This is pretty good. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. So God has given us both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. So God's given us his word, he's given us his promise. And he's given us his oath. God put his hand on his own word, raised his right hand, said, I tell him this word to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. Or I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me myself. Right? I butchered that first one. Because it's God speaking, so help me myself. Right? Just make sure we're tracking on the same thing here. It's impossible for God to lie. Think about that. In Titus verses 1 verse 2, it says, A faith and knowledge resting on the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. This is talking about eternal life, but they threw in there, hey, by the way, God doesn't lie. So if God doesn't lie, then everything he said in the Bible that we can do, or everything he said in the Bible that we, he promised to us, we can have. It's promised to us. Not just for certain people, for everybody. Numbers, we'll go back to the Old Testament, 2319, which I got to thinking. Is that like the thing off of Monster Thing? Yes. Okay, I, I forgot to look at that. I forgot to see it. I was like, what, you know, if you haven't seen the movie Monster Thing, the kid has a sock, the monster has a sock on his back, and they freak out, and they, it was like, oh, a big emergency thing. I thought of this. I was like, I got to figure that out, and then I forgot. I was like, oh, that's the birth of the old message. It says this. This is very important. So when we read this, the alarm should go off. We should take notice, and we should freak out because it's absolutely amazing. It says... God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not a human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? The answers to those two questions are no and no. Okay? We'll go back over that. God's not a man, so he does not lie. He's not a human, so he doesn't change his mind. 
So he doesn't lie. He doesn't change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? No. Has he ever promised and not carried it through? No. If God says he's faithful, guess what? He's faithful. If God says that he will provide, then I mean, guess what? He will. If God says you can have peace that passes all understanding in, in 2020, and we just got through Friday the 13th on 20, in 2020. I was expecting like the world to implode. Like, it was like crazy. And then, it, you know, people were talking about the Mandalorian. I was like, well, that must be what it is right there. The Mandalorian comes out and everybody, anyway. So if God says we can have peace that passes all understanding, then guess what? You can have peace. If God says you can have it, then that settles it. Remember, it's impossible for God to lie. So what the Bible says in his promises, that is what we can have. You can believe if you chose to. You can believe if you choose to. It's a past tense and a present tense. And we need to feel, I choose to believe. If you find something new about the Bible, hey, you know what? I believe that. You can believe. Sometimes people say, oh, I can't believe that. Remember, faith is a trust in a person. Faith is a trust in God, who we just read, never lies, never fails, never not comes through. God told Noah to build an ark, right? You go back and you think that, man, I would love, like, when we get to heaven and we're sitting at that big giant movie theater in heaven, I'm like, hey, God, can you play the story of Noah? Like, I don't want actors. I want to see what happened. Okay? It's, that, that, that God tells Noah to build an ark. Why? Uh, because I'm going to have it rain. What's rain? Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's rain? I mean, I got this weird thing sitting in my closet that opens up and boom, does that. Well, I don't know what it's for. You know? Like, Noah didn't have an umbrella sitting in his closet. So he, by faith, built an ark. If I said, hey guys, we're going to have a work day here at the church, we would have a plethora of power tools show up. We would have drills and saws and hammer drills and all these things that you pull the trigger and you just go, oh, 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 oh. I mean, if it was cold outside, they would bring a big infrared heater and we would be warm. And I mean, we would, we would just have tools and stuff and manliness and grunting going on. <laughs> Noah, if I said in Noah's time, hey, we're going to go to NARC. We have a church work day and build an ark. There wouldn't be a single power tool there. Power tool there. It would be a handsaw. Now, yesterday, my wife uh, was working on the craft with this old barn hood, and and so she goes, "Do you have a handsaw?" I was like, "Yeah, there are like several in the shed." So she goes and gets the old ones that are curved, and and she starts handsawing this. And I said, "There's there's straighter ones. There's, there was two leather ones. Anyway, anyway, I said, you know what? This would be easier if I just used the chop saw." But it's not going to give you the best cut. She goes, I don't care that kind of cut. So we went out and put the chops all on. And what took me five minutes to do this, zing, done. Next. I mean, it was just amazing. So can you imagine Noah building the ark? His right arm. I mean, he could probably lift mountains with that thing. He probably had to say, you know what? I'm getting a little lopsided here with my arm. I need to just start sawing left hand here, you know? I don't want to be that guy in the ark, you know, the boat's doing this because my arm's so heavy and strong. He didn't have power tools. He did it by hand. He did it by faith. Never seen, and the only thing that fell from the sky was bird poop when Noah was alive. It wasn't rain. Think about that. Oh my God. You can. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. I believe it. I'm not taking that back. Matter of fact, you can put that on one of the Facebook things. The only thing falling out that I know is bird poop. Anyway. <laughs> Just like God spoke to Noah, the Bible is speaking to us. We can choose to believe. It's on us. God's like, hey, just, just trust me. I know what I'm talking about. I, I, I've said it. This is it. Just have faith in those words. And when you put your faith into action, God's going to move mountains for us. We all know the end of the story of Noah. It, 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 he built the ark and God sealed it up and it rained. And it flooded the earth. Because he had faith in what God said, him and his family's lives were saved. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That means the number one way God's speaking to us is through his word. And if you want God to speak audibly to you, just hit play on the version app and the Bible will speak out loud to you. In a pretty cool British accent. I think 
God has a British accent, but you know, sometimes when I'm at work, I'll just hit play and just, just listen. And it, it's kind of neat, it kind of brings it alive. The word of God produces faith in your heart. There's no other source of faith than the words of the one who doesn't lie, of God. And when we say, oh, you know what, I believe it, and it builds faith in there. And then you go back over and you reread that, then it builds more faith. And it's like, it's like a bench press. You, you got 300 pounds and I put on a bench press and put up there, um, you know, one time. You do it multiple times, and pretty soon you'll have arms bigger than Noah. Come on, that was a good thing. That was a really good thing. You keep reading it over and over, and it builds faith in your life. The word of God has to be put into your heart for it to come out. The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you got something going on in your life and it contradicts the word of God, the word of God is screaming, hey, it could be different, it could be better. That's, you don't have to stop, you don't have to settle for that. And you're, you're going, you know what? That's right. Things in my life are going bad. My life's going, you know, pretty bad right now. 2020 is getting the best of me. No, I'm going to speak God's promise of being uh, an overcomer. That's what God says. I'm going to be an overcomer. So, you know, it's kind of hard to be like, oh, gee, you get the spirit of Eeyore. Oh, my gosh. I'm an overcomer. I can overcome something. No, when you start saying that, it, it, your chest pops out. You're like, yeah, I can't overcome. I can't do that. I don't have to settle for this. And, and, and it builds your life up. You know what? That's wh where it comes up. When we've got something going on, it's in our hearts, we're God's in our hearts. And we say, you know what? I believe I'm an overcomer. Then it starts coming out of our mouth. And then we're getting into speaking what God says over our lives. And these words create reality. What do you mean? Well, you take your kids and you know, your, your, your kids do something and, and you always put them down. And you know what? They're never gonna they're never gonna walk around with their head up. There's a story, and I don't have it, this wasn't part of my notes, but there's a story of, of some uh, couple or, or uh, a woman that lived in a country where women aren't valued, okay? And you're basically you're arranged for the marriages and and the, the husband decided to speak this, like, you know, you keep telling his wife, he's beautiful. There's an arranged marriage, right? You get to pick her out. He says, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. And that changed the way she saw herself. And that changed her countenance. And that changed, why? Because they were speaking life to her. Not, you're never, you're not good enough. You'll never amount to anything. That's, that's the bad thing, is because words shape a reality. Faith's results are determined by our confession, by what we say. And when we speak the word of God, we're speaking truth. We're speaking things that never fail. When we're speaking God's words, that, for example, you can be an overcomer, that's going to make you become an overcomer because God's words never fail. When we say that, our faith is releasing in our lives. Remember Lazarus in the Bible? If you read that story, you'll notice that Jesus knew about it. He knew about Lazarus dying a couple of days ahead of time, and he, he didn't rush to go home. He didn't rush to go around him. And, and if you want to read it, read, read it, look it up and read it. But listen, Jesus comes out, he gets to the tomb, and he, he has two things that, that are faith-filled words that come out of his mouth. He said, number one, roll away the stone. Okay, the stone was covering the grave. Roll away the stone. And, and the one of them says, uh, why do you want to do that? It's going to smell. Jesus, listen, he's been dead for four days and mummified. It's not going to be pleasant in the nostrils if you move that stone. But Jesus said, move away the stone. And then he says, hey, Lazarus, come out. He spoke because he knew what God had wanted. And he spoke it. And listen, this speaks to not only the physically dead, but it also speaks to things in our lives that are dead. Relationships, family member relationships. Work relationships with your God. If there's dead and decaying, you can speak life to them and they will resurrect. Listen, God wants us to be overcomers. The power in word, those words that Jesus said, overcame death, overcame um, uh, mummified. They put life and healing to them and he walked out of there. Those words, the words of God that we can speak to come out of us can, can speak life to anything that's dead relationships, anything in our lives. The power of faith can be released and must be released and applied by acting on God's word. In James chapter 1, it says this. 
It says, be a doer of the word. That means do what the word says. It means I choose to believe what God says, and now I'm going to act on that. I choose to believe what God says, and now I'm going to act on it. It also says faith without works is dead. Faith just standing there. I'm not really doing anything, am I? I'm not moving. I'm not acting upon it. You gotta act on what God says. In Proverbs chapter 4, it's up on the screen there. It says, Pay attention, my child, to what I say. Listen carefully. Don't lose sight of my words. This is like God speaking to us. Don't lose sight of my words. Let them penetrate deep within your heart, for they bring life in radiant health to anyone who discovers their meaning. Above all else, guard your heart. It affects everything you do. That's a pretty cool little proverb. But we can apply it to our lives. We gotta guard our hearts because out of the abundance of the heart, our mouth speaks. But listen, when we begin putting God's word to our heart as an act of our will and we believe it, we say, okay, God, I don't understand it with my brain, but I believe your words are true, so I'm gonna act on it. Anything's possible for those who believe. We have to make that choice. I believe. I believe. The Bible says that God's our strength. So if we're feeling weak, we're feeling run down, God's our strength. And 2020 has been the year of mental getting beat up. You know, sometimes we're just punching bags and we don't know what to take. There's every time we turn the news on, it's always doom and gloom. It's always, oh, this and that. It's always that. We don't know where to go. Sometimes in our lives, we keep getting, hearing bad things, and we're scared to open up a text message because it could be something else that's gone wrong. Hey, God is our strength. One part of the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of God is our strength. The Bible says that, you're, that, that you can be healed. You can talk and act like it. The Bible says that God meets our needs according to his riches and glory. Begin to talk like that. Begin to say that. Don't say things like, I can never afford it. Or, I'll never be able to get out of debt. Or I'll never be able to do these things. Begin to say that. Grab the word of God and feed on it. If there's a situation in your life that you're going through, find out what the Bible says. Well, I got to read the Bible from front to back? Mm, yeah, it's not a bad thing. But you can cheat a little bit, open up Google, and say, what does the Bible say about this? And then if it gives you the, like, a, like a Bible verse, find a hard Bible, or you know, find the Bible, find it in the Bible, and read what it says. Hey, I never knew the Bible said this. And, and find out about it. Ask somebody. Get in that version app that's on the phones and, and search in there, uh, depression. And it'll say, God will tell you, or it'll say what the Bible says about that. Say, you know, lack, or whatever you're dealing with. And then take that, that scripture and start meditating on it. Start reading it over and over. And that's when it gets into our hearts. And then say, you know what? I don't have to do what this anymore. Because this is the time in our lives where, where we don't know what to do with the situation. And we said, Jesus, can you help me out? And he goes, anything's possible for those who believe. We think about it for a second and we say, I believe. But help me not doubt or fear anymore, God, because I don't know what's going on. Because when God says it, it'll happen. You can believe if you choose to. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God, that we can, we can look at the Bible and we can see what it says and we can say, yep, that, that's speaking to me. I believe that. I believe that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that scripture to my heart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your words to be true, God, because you've never failed. You've never not provided. God, each and every single one of us that are that are here, that are listening, or people in the future that hear this message, help us believe. Help us with the doubt in our minds, but help us believe in our heart. Help us take your words to the bank. Help us say, you know what, God? I don't understand it, but I believe you to be true. Because you are faithful. God, I just thank you that we can move forward move through areas of our lives. God, I thank you for speaking to us. I thank you for, for moving in our lives. I thank you for, for just changing our thought processes. God, 
we choose to believe. We thank you for your words to be true. We thank you that your personality is to be faithful and that's to never fail. I thank you, Lord God, that you do not lie. I give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name.